Hi, it's Rob from the Bush and Balkan. Today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to paint Death Guard Plague Marines. Now this is one of the Plague Marines from the Series 3 Space Marine Heroes and we'll be painting up some of the others in the coming weeks. So the first Death Guard Marine I've painted in quite some time. It's one of the Series 3 Space Marine Heroes Death Guard miniatures. The first colour that we're going to use for it is Vallejo Russian Uniform World War II, or WW2. It's one of the Vallejo Flames of War colours. If you can't get your hands on this, then I'm pretty sure the Vallejo Orange Drab would do fine as well. You've also got Citadel Elysian Green, which is pretty similar too. So anything along those lines should be fine. We use this to do any cloth on the Marine and also the shoulder pads, the central parts of it. Once you've got the cloth and the shoulder pads done, you can move on to the next colour. Next up we're going to be using a tiny little bit of Citadel and the fist on red. We're just going to be using this to do the inside of his mouth, which is slightly longer than it should be. He's got a cut going down the side of his face that we'll also be doing with that. And also the mouse of the Nurgling that's hanging off his flail. Like so. Next colour that we're going to use is Citadel Rakarth Flesh. We're going to use this to do his skin and all the bony protrusions that are coming out of his armour, like on his shoulder and his elbow, down the side of his leg there. So any bony parts or things like that, use the Rakarth Flesh for. Because we want to do a sort of like slightly sickly, pale blue kind of coloured skin, we're going to start with Rakarth Flesh and then we can shade that with a bit of Drakenhof Nightshade and start building up the flesh from there. Next colour that we're going to use is Citadel Bane Blade Brown. I'm going to use this to do the cloth or the leather straps that are holding his knife on there and also the handle of his flail where you've got that material wrapped all the way around it. We're going to paint it Bane Blade Brown and do a really quick and easy leather strap method. So get yourself a nice smooth coat of that, and then we can move on to the next colour. Next up, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Zerius Purple. We can use this to paint up the tentacle on the side of his foot. So just give this a nice quick smooth layer, and we can move on to the next colour. Next up, it's going to be a little bit of Citadel Nurgling Green. I'm going to use this just to paint the little Nurgling who's hanging from his flail there. There's a video of how to paint Nerglings, which I'll link up below. Very quick and easy method. Just involves using a few little different shades on them just to differentiate all the different Nerglings. Make them look slightly different, even though they are pretty much the same. I'm going to use Citadel Lead Belcher. I'm going to use this to do pretty much all the flail. There's a few little brackets on it, which I'm going to paint with Vallejo Model Air Rust, which is also the colour that I like to do the armour trim on the Death Guard too. I'm going to use the lead belcher for the pieces on his backpack, which would usually be the silvery colour on Space Marines. So you've got those two arch bits at the top. The spikes going down them, they're going to be lead belcher. The two balls at the bottom that I've got the holes in, they are going to be the rust colour. But you can see here where we've added the lead belcher. Now I'm going to use some Vallejo Model Air Rust. I'm going to paint up all the other little details, so the trim of the armour, all the little Nurgle icons, the two kind of ball things on his backpack where you'd usually have the exhaust. Also going to use this to do the cross piece of the plague dagger on his back there. I'm 
Now, although this is one of the Space Marine Heroes miniatures, it is pretty much identical to all the usual Plague Marine miniatures that you can get. Really, really cool looking model though. So we're going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Pink Horror. And we're just going to use that to paint the tongue on the back of his power pack. Quick layer this. And once done, we can move on to the next colour. Which is going to be Citadel Moot Green. It's a nice bright colour green. We're going to use this to do all of the drips of horrible fluids leaking from his power pack. There's also a couple leaking from the blade on his dagger. Now you can paint these up at the moment or you can wait till later on. Basically the method that we're using to do the drips on this power pack I use on the drips on the dagger later on because I want to get that sword looking right and not worry about painting over any of the greens or the, the colours we're doing on the greens. So rather than doing that I'm going to leave them covered in lead belcher for now, paint up the whole sword and then paint on the drips afterwards. But if you give all of the drips a nice smooth layer of that and that should be fine. So the first shade that we're going to do is Citadel Druchy Violet. I'm going to use that to cover all of the Mephiston Red areas that we've painted on so far. As we paint on more and more of these shades you will see the details coming out in the model. They really are impressively detailed these miniatures. Not just the, the Heroes ones but the just general Plague Marines. All quality miniatures they are. Next up is a little bit of Citadel Caribou Crimson. We're just going to use that to paint up the tongue on the skull and there's power pack there. Like so. And next, a little bit of Citadel BL Tan Green. I'm going to use this to paint the drips that we painted in Moot Green earlier on. So give all of these little drips and bits of liquid on it a coating of BL Tan Green. Once done we can move on to the next shade. Like so. So now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Athonian Camo Shade and this is just going to be to shade the Nurgling. We'll just give that a decent coat of it so it brings out all the details and we can move on to the next shade. Now we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Seraphim Sepia. I'm going to use this to paint up all of those bony protrusions, all of his armour, and also all of the Russian uniform, the green colour. Now you can just recess shade if you want to with the Seraphim Sepia on his armour. I tend not to just because when you're painting over it, any bits that you haven't put the shade on will stand out through the main armour colour that you'll be putting back on once you've finished the shades. And that part which hasn't had the shade on it will really stand out compared to the bits that I have so I just tend to wash the whole thing in it. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Snakebite Leather Contrast and we're just going to use that to paint all of the cloth kind of bits on the shaft of his flail and also the straps that are holding onto his plague knife on his belt there. I'd already painted this because the camera didn't start, but that's fine. Next up is Citadel Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to use this to paint over all of the Vallejo Model Air Rust areas. Not only will this dull it down, but it will also give it some nice dark tarnished areas that makes it really grubby and makes it look as though it hasn't been well maintained. It's the first Plague Marine miniature that I've painted since the start of 2019, I think it was the February, when I did Lord Feltheus. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Drakenhof Nightshade, and you're just going to do quite a thin, smooth layer of this, you don't want too much on there. And this is just to discolour his skin and give him that kind of blue hue that you've seen in the pictures at the start, and maybe seen on the pictures on Instagram. 
I wanted to get these guys looking quite sickly and not quite right, so a bit of a blue hue should sort him out. We also look at the kip of that mouth. That does make him stand out. Next up, Citadel Nuln Oil. I'm going to use this to paint all of the lead belcher areas. So give these a nice coat so that you get the darkness in those recesses. And it will dull down the metallic. Now before you start adding this onto it, the lead belcher can look quite weird when you've painted it over white. It doesn't give quite as good a coverage as you, the likes of Vallejo Model Air Chrome or anything like that that would be using on the Loyalist Space Marines. So it does look quite bad when you put the lead belcher over the white. Once you've applied the null oil, that all looks fine. So this is how he's looking now with all the shades applied. You see it's brought out the detail on the whole miniature. And now we'll move on to using a little bit of Citadel Ushabti Bone mixed with some Baleo White, but any white will do. We just want to have that slightly off-white, almost very, very pale bone colour. And we're going to start reapplying the colour to the armour. Now when you're applying this, it does go on slightly streaky, but that doesn't matter. That adds to the effect of having that slightly tarnished armour. So you don't want this to be 100% smooth when you're reapplying it. You do want there to be some of that kind of streaky, not 100% coverage when you're putting that on. And that will add to the look of the armour. Now this is quite a long section. It will take quite a bit of time to get all the armour painted up. But once you've finished, we're going to move on to Citadel Rackarth Flesh. I'm going to start reapplying the colour to the spines growing out of his body. And also reapply it to his face. Now again, when you're reapplying this to his face, you don't really need that 100% smooth coverage like you didn't with the armour. Because by their very nature, they're all mottled and a bit funky looking with all the plagues and disease they carry. So if it isn't 100% smooth, that doesn't matter too much. A bit of streakiness in the colours kind of lets them look a bit dishevelled and a bit manky. So working on the skin again, we're going to add a little bit of Citadel Deepkin Flesh to the Rakarth Flesh. And we're going to start to highlight his face. Slightly off camera there, I'm sorry. So we'll move that down in a second. When you're applying this, you want to apply it to pretty much all the head. But you want to make sure that you pick out all the details. Leaving the light blue shade in the recesses. I say light blue because it didn't put too much on. So it's not as dark as it could be. Once we finish doing the head, it will give that blue tint to it, make it look a bit rotting and a bit unpleasant. So we're going to add a little bit more deepkin flesh to the previous mix. I'm going to start highlighting that once again. So when you're highlighting the details with this layer, you want to try and get the highlights to be on the top edge of the thing. So the top edges of the cheekbones, the details on his nose, those ridges on his head any of the little crow's feet round his eyes, that kind of thing. You can really see the detail on the face coming out when you're painting these layers. That quite hideous expression he's got. So now I'm just going to use a little bit of Vallejo White. I'm going to put his eyes in. As always when you're painting eyes, you want to be dragging the brush from his nose towards the outside from the inside of the face to the outside of the face so if you can do that on both sides that's fine this eye just behind the shoulder pad is a pain to get but it is manageable just about once you've got those eyes done we're going to use a little spot of Vallejo black and we're going to put the pupils in his eyes that takes a little bit longer than usual to do these pupils because I put the paint in the palette and then used a spot of old paint that was in there and I couldn't understand why it was quite dry. Now we're just going to use a little bit of Citadel Rakarth flesh to do his teeth. So they have that slightly off-white colour. So I'm using an Army Painter Wargamer character brush here because they are very, very thin. They have a really good point on them. So that's what I use to do all my fine detail stuff. 
you're just painting them teeth. If you manage to put a little bit of paint over the gap in the teeth, you can just use a little tiny bit of Caro Bird Crimson and give that a couple of coats of that, and that'll hide it away nicely. Now I'm going to add some Citadel Ushabti bone to the Rakarth flesh. I'm going to start doing the highlights on these bone spines and the teeth. So you want to do this colour about maybe three quarters of the length. I'm using the Wargamer character brush here again from Army Painter. And that's just so we can kind of get the streaks and the ridges painted. There's a lot of detail on these spines as they come out from the armour. So you can get all the detail on them shown with the highlights. So we're going to add a little bit of Vallejo White to the previous mix. And then we're going to highlight the bones and his teeth once more. This time we're doing about maybe a third of it, if that. See the way I rest the fingers of one hand on the fingers of another hand, or on the painting handle, and that's just to add extra support to the brush hand. You find sometimes that can steady it a little bit, which is quite handy. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Seraphim Sepia. I'm going to use this to start doing streaks on his armour. So here I'm using a Citadel Medium Layer Brush, which is a little bit thick for this maybe. The later layers of streaks, I use the Warm Gamer Character Brush again. So if you've got a Warm Gamer Character Brush, then use that for painting the streaks down the armour panels. You can get them a lot finer with that brush. So it's been a while since I've painted Death Guard and I'd completely forgotten which brush I use. So that's how he's looking with the first layer of streaks. His armour's looking quite manky. I'm going to use a little bit of Seraphim Sepia again. I'm going to use this to discolour the flail and all the lead belcher areas. It's a very simple technique to use this that I'm going to be using to corrode all these areas and the weapons and things. It just uses a couple of shades. The Typhus Corrosion Textured Paint, or Technical Paint it is, but it's got the gravel in there. And also the Rise of Rust Dry Paint. So now I'm going to use Citadel Agrax Earth Shade. I'm going to start putting on these streaks. You see here I'm using the same medium layer brush I think it's possibly part way through this layer or on the next layer I realise that the other brush is far superior to doing the thin streaks than this one but again so long as you get those vertical streaks and making it look you can also use the Agrax Air Shade to add more weathering and corrosion to the lead belcher parts as well as so there's lots of runs like any filth and dirt and things and those joints is running down to the next part that's fine. So here we're using Citadel Known Oil to do the last set of streaks. Rather than these three different colours, it looks like all the different kinds of things and fluids that's running from his armour. Because they're not the most pleasant of chaps. When you're reading the books and it says about all the filth and the rust and the decay and the excrement and everything like that that's running from them, they must be absolutely horrific, so that's how I try and paint them up. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Carabay Crimson. I'm going to use this to paint up the little tube that's on his chest here, which I failed to shade earlier on. And it is that well hidden that we're just going to shade that, and then when we come to pick out the boils, we'll be painting those up on that as well, but... Don't need to do too much with that piece because you can't really see it from any angle. Now we're going to move on to Citadel Typhus Corrosion. I'm really going to start working in the decay and the rust on his armour. Or at least the lead belcher part of it. You want to think about which areas you're going to be rusting so you tend to get it around, say, where the spikes are or the edges of things or in little nooks where 
any water or fluids is going to rest on the metal. So you want to think about adding it to those kind of areas on the blade, adding it around those details and little bits on the flat of the blade just to give that a bit of detail and texture. Now that we've put that on and it's dried, we're going to use Citadel Riser Rust or Riser Rust, depending on how you want to say it. And we're just going to gently apply this to all the areas that we've added typhus corrosion. You can also add it to areas where you've just used some of that discoloration using your Grax Air Shade and a Seraphim Sepia if you want to. I'll do a video tutorial on how to do the weapons and weather the metal parts if that would be any use to anyone. If you just add a little bit of that to certain parts of the metal, it gives it that orangey rusty colour as though it's just on the turn. And finally, now that we've added those, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Fugan Orange. And you're just going to paint this lightly around the areas that you've just rusted up. Now you don't put this on too thick because it can be quite bright and stand out. But if you just paint up gently, put little bits over the rust and then the areas around it and it kind of all blends it together and makes it look like it really is rusted. And it's got that kind of damp, rusty look to it. Now I'm going to be using a little bit of Citadel Dawn Yellow. I'm going to be using this to paint all the little boils on the Death Guard chap and on his little Nurgling pals and any other little bits that have got those little boil things on. Some miniatures have far more than others. But I'm going to paint these with Dawn Yellow anyway. I used to mix my own colour but the Dawn Yellow is pretty much identical to what I used to mix so easy to just use one paint rather than mixing two. Once you've finished off all the boils, we can go on to the next one. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Athonian Camo Shade. I'm going to use this to paint over the what I have painted up like sick, which is coming out of his mouth. I painted that up with the Dawn Yellow, so it's quite a vivid yellow. But then painting it with the Athonian Camo Shade, that really darkens it down and makes it look like quite a horrible pukey colour. Now we're using... Citadel Nurgling Green to reapply some of the colour to his skin. So you want to think about what areas are going to be shaded, which areas are going to be catching the light, and paint it accordingly. So you're going to have those lighter colours on the top edges and the top areas of the Nurgling, while sort of underneath his torso, I don't touch with the Nurgling Green, I'll leave that the shaded colour. Next up we're just going to use a little tiny bit of Citadel Squig Orange. I'm going to paint some of these little lumps in what is either sick or meant to be his tongue but I'm painting it like it's sick coming out of his mouth because he's swinging round. So I'm going to paint a few little orange bits in there. I'm also going to use Citadel Ushabti Bone and paint a few of those lumps with that colour too. like so. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Tesseract Glow. I'm just going to put a few little spots of this within the vomit, just to give that a bit of a different colour. Like so. Now I'm going to use some Nurgling Green, mixed with a little bit of Vallejo White. I'm going to do, start doing the highlights on his skin. Now again you want to think about where the light is going to be catching it. So you're going to be doing mainly top edges and highlighting those areas that you've just put the Nurgling Green back onto. Like so. Now I'm just going to add some Vallejo White to the previous mix. I'm going to do one final highlight to his skin. So we're going to be picking out the areas where you highlighted previously and just adding the top edges and extreme highlight to them. Maybe picking out a few details on his torso 
the back of his head or maybe the odd wrinkle here and there just to give that a little bit of texture a bit of a 3d look to it Now I'm going to use some Vallejo white and we're just going to paint the eye of the Nurgling. Which is nicely out of shot there, sorry about that. Also going to paint up his teeth. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo black. And we're just going to put the pupil on his eye. Like so. Now it's on to a little bit of Citadel Nihilac Oxide. I'm going to start adding this to all the areas where we used the Vallejo Modeler Rust and then shaded it with the Grax Air Shade. You want to be trying to get this around edges and increases and around the bolts. Any areas that aren't going to be generally scraped day to day where the very degree of build up on that. And once you've finished that, we can move on to the next colour, which is going to be Citadel Gene Stealer Purple. I'm just going to start highlighting the ridges on this little tentacle on his foot. Like so. I'm going to highlight these using a little bit of Citadel Pink Horror. So you're highlighting about 50% of the previous layer with this one. And once you've got that done, we can use the final layer on the tentacle, which is going to be Citadel Emperor's Children. And this is just to do a final little highlight on each of those ridges, just to make them really stand out. Like so. So now we're just going to mix a little bit of Vallejo white with some Ushabti bone and just finally do one last highlight on these bone spines. I didn't think the very tips of them were as bright as I'd like them, so I thought I'd just mix a little bit of Vallejo white with Ushabti bone and just highlight the tips of them to make them stand out a little bit more than they did. Now we're going to start adding a bit of grimness to him, so we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Red Wash. And all we're doing is we're going around each of the kind of boils or spots on him and just leaving that lighter red shade around it. This kind of gives the impression because you can see through it, so you can see the yellow and you can see the green beneath that. And it gives the impression of sort of like really tender skin around those areas so do it around the eyes as well we'll also be doing this on the plague marine's face just to make that look a bit more tender as well so now we're just using a little bit of moot green we're going to start working on these drips and the liquids that are coming out of his backpack so you're mainly just painting up these drips again but leaving any shade within the recesses where there's like two drips or any areas that are going to be slightly more shaded than the other. Like so. Now we're going to add a little bit of Vallejo white to the Mook green. I'm just going to highlight the drips. So what we're doing to highlight these is you're going straight down one side and curling on the underside a little. It's so kind of like you do when you're doing the teardrop shaped gems on the Blood Angels or something like that. It's basically you're doing almost half of it, following the outside of the drip round and curling underneath the bottom of the drip. So 
So we're just going to add a little bit more white to the green mix that we've just used. I'm going to highlight about half of the area that we previously highlighted with the last bit. Slightly off camera there, sorry about that. And finally, we're going to use a little bit of white to put one final highlight on those drips. And you're just doing a thin line and maybe a little dot at the top and the bottom of the line on each drip, just to give the impression that the light is reflecting off them. Once you've finished and sprayed it, I always spray with matte varnish, but when you've finished, it might be worth going over the drips any areas that you want to look moist using the gloss hard coat which is what I use from Citadel just a nice gloss varnish so we're now going to use some Vallejo white and we're just going to whiten the smoke coming out of each of these pieces of the flail we're just going to do a very quick and very easy green glow on these but it looks quite nice and because it's quite bright, it does stand out against the kind of browny, beigey colour of the Death Guard armour. So it's nice to have that kind of brightness with the dullness of the rest of the armour as well. So to get that glowing effect, we're just going to use some Citadel Tesseract Glow. I'm going to put this on quite a lot so that you get a kind of deep green within the recesses, while it's going to be yellower and lighter on the raised areas. So if you put this on as a thin layer, it'll all just look yellow. If you put it on a little bit like I am doing here, you will get that green in the recesses, which makes it look like it is glowing. Makes it look like some putrid kind of smoke too. If you want to highlight that with white, you can do, but I'm going to leave as is, because I just want that to look completely, completely glowy, as it were. So I'm going to go back to the Russian uniform, or whichever colour that you were using for the armour plates on the pauldrons. I'm just going to reapply some of that colour to the top edges. And you can do this quite slapdash, like you did with the kind of bone coloured armour. You don't need it to be 100% on the armour panels, because you want them to look quite mottled as well, as if they've corroded and rusted a little bit. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo white mixed with the Russian uniform. I'm just going to do some light highlights on the cloth between his legs and a couple of little highlights on the ridges on his armour, like where the spine is broken through. You don't need too much, just a little bit to give that a bit of a, a highlight there. The final colour that we're going to use is after it's been sprayed with matte varnish, I'm now going to use citadel blood for the blood god and i'm just going to gore up all of the wounds on the nurgling and also on the death guard chap himself so on a death guard chap he has a few little splits in his armor and where he has the tentacle coming out of his foot the side of his mouth the cut down his face all those kind of areas i'm just going to be using them and running a little bit of this shiny gloss blood just to make him look a little bit more dishevelled than he already does. And that is the finished Death Guard Plague Marine. I really do like this chap. I like the Death Guard in general, but these ones really, really do look cool, so you can expect to see some more Plague Marines and different stuff coming up soon. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much.